All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined all the way over on the other side of the world from Singapore with Kevin Cottom. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing great, John. Thanks very much for the invitation to be here today. Yeah, and Anderson, thank you so much for it's early, early morning there in, in Singapore. Thank you for this. And and Kevin is the CEO, Global Nomad of Go Nomading uh, Limited. And he also the author of the book, The Nomadic Mindset, Never Settle for Too Long. Uh, and yeah. I guess let's just let's just dive straight in, Kevin, and let's get it. When you talk about um, the nomadic mindset, what do you mean? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. It's, you know, many people ask me this question on an ongoing basis. And so the first thing is, is that I want to dispel the myth. The, the myth is, is that it's not about travel. Um, uh, so it is travel in one way, but it's not necessarily physical travel. Physical travel can be. When I was in Mongolia doing my research for the book, um, I spent some time in the yurts and a variety of other places along the way. And I met a woman who was in charge of the uh, she was the head of the branding council of Mongolia. And I asked her, what is the true meaning of nomad? And she said, it is the movement of the mind, the mm. movement of the mind. So the, the nomadic mindset is actually the physical movement and the spiritual movement and the mental movement of the mind. Mm. And that's because the mind is not just in the head. Yeah, be, no, and I, I, I get that. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great way of, of putting it because... Um, we can be very limited or blinkered in our thinking and in in the in the horizons we set for ourselves. So how how do you start to break out of sort of very constrained thinking? Yeah, yeah, constrained thinking. And interestingly enough, uh, just one thing around constrained is, is that uh, when I was in Kenya with the Maasai. Uh, Maasai warrior said to me, he mm -hmm. said, you know, people in the West, you have such congested thoughts, you suggest congested minds. And I thought, you know, it's like a cold congestion. And how do we get out of that is the question. And, and the question is challenging, however, but uh, it, these are all blocks and limitations that we put up and we put up through a variety of different education, through the external environments, uh, the way we education, all of these things. And so we need to break down a lot of those barriers and those myths and also those beliefs in actual fact that we've had about how we should should do things. And instead of looking at how do we want to do things, how do we want to be? And I believe that those particular aspects of, are really important about being able to get into this nomadic mindset. And the nomadic mindset is, lives within everybody. And it's just that we need to tap into it. It is this flexibility, it's this agility, it's the adaptability, it's this evolving. It is this constant thing that people are talking about in industry today is we need this. And uh, so the ways to go about it, first of all, is to really see perspective, not just from our own, but from a, a very wide angle, and then hone in on decisions. Most people are very narrow and they have, it's very hard to get wide. In my coaching, that is really what we end up doing is trying to help people get wider. But it is about looking at a broader perspective for one thing, is to look at everything as an opportunity. So when you see something or somebody's put in front of you or, or why do you meet someone, is question yourself. Why is this person being served up to me, delivered to me as a gift to me? Or why is this situation? This starts to expand your mind and the flexibility of it because we have a very sort of neuroplasticity of where we're able to do that. However, we have, as I say, become very constricted through our, a lot of our thinking and also media also a lot sure. constricts us because of it. it's an individual thought process, uh, even though it's supposed to be broad minded. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest that people also need to think about being in nature more than meditation or these are ways of getting through it, but it's also just reading. It's, a, it's about expanding your mind. And a lot of the time traveling is one of the ways, but travel doesn't always do it for people because tra some people travel just to go to a beach and just drink up a storm. 
some people go to see the culture and understand and dig into the culture and the people. Because, you know, John, you've traveled a lot. And so yeah. consequently, the it's the people that make a country. It's the yeah. history that makes the country. This is the exploration. And this helps us to expand. Yeah, and and I was um, and and I totally agree with you. And yeah, and and when I when I travel, like even for business travel, you know, Singapore where you are, or other places like that, I always tried to come in a day early, uh, because I would like I would like maybe take the Sunday to walk around to walk around the city. Like I love places that you can walk around, like Singapore. You can walk around, go down the Chinese Quarter, see the Buddhist temple. You can go to the market. You can go to the high end. Well, I mean, there's so many different things. You can go up and, you know, the trail where the monkeys are and all of that, or go up to where the museum of the history of the, you know, the battle during the Second World War. There's so, I agree with you, there's so much richness there if you go out and find it. But I wanted to come back to something that you said earlier about from the, you said the Maasai warrior um, about a congested mind, because I do think that part of what's holding people back today from being expansive is the fact that they actually are filling their minds with so many things. There's so many distractions, there's social media, there's the news, there's everything like that. Actually having, as you said, like being in nature or quiet or meditation, and everything, it just seems so almost counterculture. Yeah. Um, I think that what's, what's very interesting there is, is, is the word noise. And it's about getting rid of the noise. And uh, we have so much noise around us, inside of us and outside of us that we're creating and also it's created for us. Uh, recently, I decided to go on an eMERGE retreat. And what that meant was is a self-eMERGE retreat. And what I did was is that I decided that I felt something was stirring inside of me, an idea, a thought, a creation, but I couldn't get to it because it was covered by a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And so what I ended up doing was I got rid of all the media. I would not allow myself onto social media, maybe for five minutes a day. I started to go back to journaling. I started to go back into nature again. I started to allow myself to be still even more. And all of a sudden things started to emerge and the voice inside of me started to appear. And that's when I began to realize that my focus was really about evolution. And that's what was coming through here is the nomadic mindset is really about evolution. Another, and, and so I think that it's this noise, this consistent noise, and we have to, it, it, we have to have a very conscious effort to get, remove it. But if you don't have that conscious awareness, then it's very, very difficult to cut away because it's addictive. But then yeah. that's what media wants you to do and all the noise and the social media, they want it to be addictive. No, it's totally designed to be addictive. And and just like news today, you referenced earlier, news is not there to inform you, it's there to provoke. And uh, regardless of which, uh, where you sit on the political spectrum, that's what they do. Yeah. Uh, and, and as you mentioned earlier, though, about, um, you know, as, as we move forward with business and that, you know, like people... Everybody want everybody's so busy and they keep telling me like I'm busier than I've ever been in my life. And I always say, are you though? Are you just more distracted? You know, because there's a difference. Uh, uh, but how are you how are you supposed to figure out how business is going to evolve strategy for the future, how to maybe reorient or reorganize things if you can't give yourself quiet moments to actually think about it, even to to, to think about and to strategize about the future? Yeah, um, I hear this a lot from my coaching clients. I don't have enough time to reflect. I don't have any reflection time. When, how can I move it in? There's just so many Zoom meetings, meet, Teams meetings, everything online. I'm so distracted from everything. And this is, this is a commitment to yourself to say no. You know, I, we're afraid to say no on a very big basis of, of our living. And the point is, is we need to say no, basta, you know, let's stop this noise and be able to consciously say, I'm going to take some reflection time every day. A client of mine once said to me that they were taking a reflection time and looking out the window and their boss came in and the boss came in and said, what are you doing? You're not doing any work. And she said, in actual fact, I'm doing a lot of work. It's all in my reflection. 
do what I'm doing, taking time now. And this reflection time is paramount for all people, not just CEOs and, and teams and every individual needs to take reflection time as to be with themselves, look at things from a very wide perspective, get into the nitty gritty if you want, but just observe. And a lot of it reflection is observation. And that means an internal observation and an external observation. And we are very bad at observing. Um, there's, I think the, the thing that is, I think is really interesting here is that when we talk about reflection is that when I would go with the Maasai and wander the Maasai Mara with them, I would watch them. I would watch all of them. And there's six things that happen to them all at the same time. One, they're still. Two, they're alert. Three, they're deeply listening. Four, they're observing from 360. They're curious about anything that is happening in the, their environment. And their intuition is on full, fully. So this is their survival mechanism. Most of us have a hard enough time to do one. And if we bring that back to reflection, that is stillness. But at the same time, being alert to whatever thoughts are coming up or ideas and planning perhaps and jot them down and to be able to do that. But it's also listening to your inner voice and, and but from a, a perspective of observation and not get so tightly involved with it. And that yeah. takes No, I, I know. I just wanted to come back on that thing like reflection um, and observation because I, I think that's such a profound point that I want everybody to make sure everybody picks up on. Um, because, yeah, I mean, sometimes you would think, yeah, reflection is just, well, you're just sitting back and you're just you know, reflecting on things, thinking about things. But to your point is the observation part and the alertness and what you just mentioned about the Maasai, you know, the, the warriors there just uh, is like that is if you if you didn't if you weren't standing there to observe them, if you just casually pass by, you would just think there's some guy standing in the Maasai, right? Absolutely but they are completely interconnected with everything that is going on. I mean, they don't look like they are, but they, you just need to hear what they have to say once they start to speak, or you know, they will share with you, okay, did you see that over there? What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it's you funny because- I mean? Or did you hear that? So, I mean, it, it, is, it's, it is a practice that we have gotten out of. And I think it's a really important one to get back into. I mean, here in Singapore, you know, we have, a, it's a very small island and it's, mm -hmm. but it has a lot of beautiful areas of nature. I made it a real strong factor that because I said I was moving on and leaving Singapore that I needed to go and find out what was the rest of the country like, because all I could tell them was Orchard Street and Marina Bay Sands and all of the business and, you know, CBD and whatever. And I'm going, there must be more to this place. And you hear more and more these days of CEOs and a and lot of business people getting out on their bicycles now, walking, doing a lot of different ways of getting out and you know getting away so their mind can just sort of release. And um, I think this is very, very important because we're too top heavy. We're not into the heart enough. We're not into the intuition. Yeah, no, I, I I totally agree with you, and it's and it's funny because um, I I think this this idea of stillness and 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 self reflection, and I talk a lot, I talk to people a lot these days about uh, the fact that I think many people are kind of afraid to be alone with themselves because we become mm -hmm. we have we latch onto all these crutches that do everything they can to help us not to be with ourselves. And it, and it, and it's amazing how that has become probably the hardest thing for a lot of people to do is to spend any quality time with themselves. Absolutely. And I would suggest that in actual fact that um, is horrific or challenging this COVID period has been is that it actually is a mirror for us to look at ourselves and look at ourselves of what, what are we thinking? What are we doing? Well, how are we being? What do we want? What's important to us? It doesn't mean to say just individually, but also organizationally. What is the effect that we are creating on this world? And, and this is part of that reflection. It can be some micro to macro level, but it allows us to 
a moment of stillness of and stillness is not dead right stillness oh, is no. not is no. is still movement everything is moving we're never not moving but it, it is this quiet that we're looking for and it is this quiet area which i call that we need to go nomading we need to go nomading inside of ourselves to travel through the paths to figure out what is it that we're thinking what is the creative idea where are we going what is my where is my heart all of these things it's nomading and by going through the nomading we find wonderment we find that and you know i think that this is part of that nomadic mindset is it allows you that release it allows you that flexibility it allows you that I mean, if we look at the movie Nomadland, for example, that was quite successful, it was talking about resilience and hope, but it was also looking at this concept of going nomading on a different level. And it's not about poverty. And I think we have to be very careful about richness as opposed to poverty. We're talking about the richness of the soul here, mm -hmm. of being able to find what's important. And that richness of the soul moves into organizations and it should be the body of an organization is the richness. Yeah, and and, so yeah I was going to say, and if you think about it, um, you know, what you said there about that sense of wonderment, because it's through the sense of wonderment that you are going to produce products or services or whatever that can help improve people's lives, you know, and help them more effective in their businesses and their personal life, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, but the sense of wonder, the sense of wonderment is the thing that will help you be creative. And if you're not allowing yourself the opportunity to rediscover that, because let's face it, uh, we do a great job of burying our sense of wonderment. <laughs> we do that. Huh? And also we're told not to do this because it is uh, this wonderment is a little bit like dreaming, right? Mm. And dreaming, we're told when we were children in school, do not daydream, don't daydream, which actually is scientifically incorrect because the dreaming is actually the creative space of where you're actually working on things. This is the reflection part as well. And so that leads to the wonderment of ideas and thoughts. I mean, John, I'm sure you've had many moments of where you just had this ping, like an aha moment, and it's come out of this, this reflection or this wonderment of dreaming. Yeah, and and um, and I do think, uh, like you said earlier, about uh, you know traveling, um, and it doesn't have to be travel. You know, you've got we all live in neighborhoods, as you said. I mean, with things that probably places we haven't discovered yet. But sometimes just taking yourself out of your environment, even if it's five minutes down the road, and spending a little time to yourself will will you will have those moments. Like, I mean, how often have you seen the breakthroughs on you've been struggling with an issue, and the breakthrough comes when. You're walking along the beach or you're walking or even to be honest like i could even do it walking through crowded shopping malls and i put music on in my ears and just kind of lose myself in the moment and sometimes i'll have great breakthrough thoughts yeah Absolutely. Um, the, other thing, the other thing sorry i just wanted to ask you about is um people are feeling very very disconnected that's what i hear most often now is you know despite the fact that we're all so high hyper connected but but disconnected and and i think it, and i and as we were talking here it just kind of struck me i think a lot of it is disconnected it's not disconnected from the rest of the world or from people it's disconnected from self yeah i think that this is a period as i said of covid of, of, of as a, as a mirror is to start looking at what is that disconnection what what is happening within me what is important to me and i and those are big lofty thoughts However, they're actually, they're very important thoughts of if, you know, this, there's been a lot, a lot of loneliness, the disconnection, I think a lot of time is people are talking about the uncertainty, the unknowns, all of these things. But if I were to ask a nomad and a Maasai or a Berber in the Sahara, they would say, what are you talking about? Uncertainty is all the time. I mean, the weather changes, the sand changes, everything changes. So why are you worrying about it? I mean, don't even give it thought, you know? And they talk about the unknown. Well, the unknown is always here and that's the future, but the known is only the past. So if you only want to live in the past, then it's the known. And that is the disconnection I think is a lot is, is they're trying to deal with trying to balance and figure out how do I deal with this. 
And I say, stop trying to figure it out. It's just go nomading and it will appear to you. We're trying so much to go, oh, yeah, uh, you know, what is it? I feel so disconnected. But just allow yourself to say, okay, but I am connected. I'm a connected being. You know, no, fact, I'm, a, I'm not a connected being. I'm an interconnected being. No, absolutely. And and I love what you just said there, because I do think that um, that is it. We're, and, and it's such a it's such a crazy paradox, though, isn't it? Like that life is so unpredictable. <laughs> and you say, you know, like, the you know, who, you, you talk to a nomad and they'll be like, are you crazy? Like, you know, stuff happens all the time. I'm ready for anything. But we in 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 a lot of like and in in corporate in corporate worlds and all of that and particularly and even in our own lives we try to organize everything and control it and we try to almost build systems that we think can stop surprises absolutely i mean i love the word that you use control i mean we can only control what we can control so if you are facing a lion and so this is what a Maasai and also the, the Bushman Kalahari would tell me is, you know, if you're going to go and face a lion, you have to face the lion. And what does that mean? And the lions can be everywhere today. And it's not a negative thing. It can be a very positive thing as a lion because it's very courageous. And courage comes from the heart, the origin. And so what they would say is, is that if you are facing a lion, you need to stay there. You need to stand and you need to be still. You need to be alert to anything that's going on. You need to be alert to any sounds and listening and observation, all the things that I told you, that I shared with you. But they said, you look them in the eye. And you say, you look them in the eye, you have a, converse, a silent conversation with them. This is my moment to have that food, which is in front of us and between us. It is my turn to eat. Your turn will be another time. And they wait and they wait with sword in their hand or spear in their hand. And they say the lion will disappear. Yeah. So I think what happens for all of us is this whole series of things of us have fear. You know, everything is about this fear. So this control, we need to control things because we are afraid that somebody else is going to. I mean, we live in this constant and we are given that through media to be in a fearful state on an ongoing basis because it's very much a way of, of psychologically uh, disconnecting us. And I think that we need to take control back of who we are as individuals. And I don't mean to say our individualisticness of which has happened in like Western Europe during and, and America during this whole period of COVID, of that was my freedom, I'll do what I want to do, you know, I'll run out there and I don't care about other people. And that's the problem, I don't care. And what has happened in Asia, and I've asked a variety of people, and we've had these conversations, and also in Africa in many ways, is that because they are so community-minded, that this sense of the strength of community is important. So this is the control, we can control these things by understanding our community, not only our community external to us, but the community of ideas and thoughts that are within us. And to be able to see that broader perspective by seeing that from a nomadic point of view. It's, it's, and it doesn't mean scary nomadic. No, nomadic is actually so beautiful mm -hmm. because it is the richness of the individual. It's the richness of freedom. And one Maasai war said to me, which I think is very appropriate for today and what you're talking about, he says, we are migrating. Where we were is not where we are, we are evolving. And how, how perfect is that for a time like now? Mm -hmm. For someone that is a warrior, and he, he, but he sees this from a very different perspective of animals migrating, people migrating, but, we are, but thoughts are migrating. Yeah. And that is, you know, we tend to control those thoughts, but let them loose, let them have a life. And you'll choose the ones you do, you choose the ones you don't. Some will fall away, some will come forward. Some plans will come together, some plans will not. Creative ideas come, they go. But let the freedom of movement happen within all of those. Don't put a barrier up around it. Don't congest yourself. Mm. 
No, I, I love that. That's um, that's that's fantastic. And and just one last comment I wanted to make. Actually, it's funny you mentioned about community because um, at the beginning of of the pandemic, certainly here, one one there was one phenomenon, obviously because people were restricted, is that people came out of their houses. They walked as families. They went to, right around to where I am. Right, people were out. They're out running. They're out walking as as family groups. Um, some of them sometimes they were walking as as friends. Even I saw like young young friends like walking, you know, six feet apart. You know, still having conversations or whatever. But there was but there was for a moment there was almost like a throwback to community, to people engaging in neighborhoods and talking to each other, and it disappeared again because everybody kind of went back to separating and to doing their own thing. And it's, and it's funny. It's like, it's like we're, we, you know, community is like some, as I said, it happened spontaneously for a short while, but it's not something that we celebrate so much anymore here. Yeah. I think that that's a real sadness and because that will be the decline of the American empire on many ways, you know, as one of the things is that, you community is extremely important and that's where you get the community of ideas and thoughts of mm -hmm. collaboration as a circle you know like a circular economy it becomes a circular understanding of humanity and also of creativity and innovation everything comes from circle as this this business and in ancient ancient wisdom is everything is in a circle right so yeah. you know i mean I, the circle is the community yeah, no, and that's if you go back, like as we said before, we came on air, like I'm from Ireland and the ancient Celts, all Celtic symbolism is is circular. It's it's always never ending, you know, it's a, um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's unfortunate. Uh, and I think there's a great opportunity, but we have to move away from everything being so um, absolutist, right? If you, ta if you, Kevin, rather, if you don't agree 100% with my views on the world, then we can't engage, then you're a terrible person and I'm a morally superior person to you and that's just the way it is. I think the world is obviously such a new, much more nuanced place and we've lost the sense of nuance. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm with you completely on all of that and I, that's why I sense that um, in my book, I talk about two other mindsets, which I won't go into now, but they're, one of them is a settler mindset and a builder mindset. And we have all three that live within us, which is have a dominance for one more than another. But the challenge has been, you know, and what is sort of the lagging over is the builder and the settler are very much the industrialized mindsets and also the, the agriculturalist. And that is what is still driving a lot of this. And it's the nomad mindset that really needs to come in. If I talk about organizations, for example, organizations and the executives that I've all talked about, and they, I would say 90% of them, when I ask them which the mindset they need more today, and they say nomadic. So if that's the case, then what are we doing? We need to find that. And so, you know, it, it's, it's not difficult. It's just the will. Absolutely. Look, a great way to finish. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. The book is called The Nomadic Mindset, Never Settle for Too Long. Um, a wonderful, it's a wonderful concept. And as you can hear from, from what Kevin has spoken about today, like the richness of the experiences that you've had and you're bringing to bear here. And I think this is a pivotal moment for us. Um, it certainly, you know, it's, it's tragic what has happened with the pandemic, but every there's opportunity in everything and this is the opportunity now to maybe break out of the con the constraints that we have operated under and and embrace the you know the nomadic mindset I, I love it i think it's fantastic all of kevin's information is going to be below this video including links to the book etc but before we go uh, kevin is there anything else you'd like to share with the audience about yourself and what you do uh, yeah sure um, i'm 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 a coach, I'm a speaker, and what I mainly do is, is I help, I dare individuals and, uh, and also help them to in inspire them to help them to expand and to evolve and, and by using the nomadic mindset and, and triggering that. My focus is really about that flow, which helps people to get through their stuckness, their individualism, and also look at community and collaboration in a very different way, but just to and look at your 
models even in business is to what's going on in my culture, in these cultures. And so I look at that from a very sort of wide lens and that lens is a nomadic mindset. Of course, building, bringing in the builder and settler, but at the same time is really looking at how can you evolve? And I dare everyone to evolve because this is the time to do it. Yeah, no, I love that. I'll second that. I dare everybody to evolve as well. I dare myself too, just so I'm including myself. Um, listen, fantastic. Thank you so much, Kevin. This has been fascinating. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, John.